from their encounters with races from other planets. The information is the activation. Let's awaken this world together. We are the forever students, and we will not be silent. We are the ones that we've been waiting for pretty long. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Full Spectrum Universe. My name is Rob Yox, and we are the embattled broadcast from behind enemy lines in the once great state of New York. And this might just be one of my most prolific mic drop moments tonight. Tonight, we're going to settle the debate. There is a great debate that is on the Internet of who is good, who is bad, which is which, and why is what, and what is why. We are going to settle that tonight. And I'm gonna, we're going to be talking about the Emerald Tablet. And while we talk about the Emerald Tablet, we're going to be talking about Thoth, Anki, and Enlil. Now, we're not going to be going into the histories of these characters. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on an inflection point of what happened to humanity in this moment in time when these entities were interacting with us, so to say, this incarnation of human beings and what it did and how it affected us from that point forward. So again, we're going to be focused on an inflection point and it's all surrounding the Emerald Tablet. Now, the Emerald Tablet as well, not only are we going to be talking about what's surrounding it, we're going to be talking about what's on it. And why that in itself is essentially super important to know what had happened and what took place in the creation of this Emerald Tablet. So this is going to be a, a really, really prolific episode. I was reading the material, getting myself prepared. And the first thing that came to my mind is, holy shit, this is going to be a banger. This is going to be a banger. And it's going to absolutely just... It's it's going to change minds. It's going to change hearts. And we're going to see things that maybe we didn't see before. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a, a perfect view of who these entities are, why they do what they do, and why is it so important to understand it? Because there is no... I, once this takes place, it's very difficult to come back and to say, well, you know, this person has changed. And yes, I get that. Forgiveness is something that we always talk about. But this is going to put some perspectives completely straight when we look at this, right? So thank you, everybody, for being here. I see Sugar Bee is here. Sugar Bee, so great to see you. It's been a while, girl. Awesome. Awesome. Stone Hobbit, Jason, Phoenix. We've got a lot of people in the chat. Rocks. We've got the light, uh, Liquid Light Project, my friend. Always, always a pleasure. Linda Wyatt, we've got a lot of people here tonight. We've got uh, Indy Woods. Welcome, everybody. This is going to be so much fun. Ronnie's here as well. Let's get into the madness, right? Let us jump in. So the Emerald Tablet, Thoth, Anki, and Enlil. So a brief history of events around the tablet. Then we're going to get into what the tablet talks about. So the Emerald Tablet is something that we've all heard of before. It is a gigantic, gigantic, basic, basically a, a big stone slab. And there's also a plate that goes with it, right? So approximately 22,000 years ago, the Ayani Massacre, I, I, uh, Aseni Breeding, and the Emerald Tablet is where we're going to start. And the females taken to, were taken to Nibiru by Thoth, who is an Anunnaki, for forced breeding. Thoth also, also stole the, CD, the CDT plates and wrote down the Emerald Tablet. This is a trigger timeline for Hermeticism. Esoteric Kabbalah, mystery schools, secret societies were formed. To, to hide the ancient knowledge from the common people, right? So this is what is the Emerald Tablet as a notion. So 
we're going to talk about Hermetica. And what is Hermetica? Hermetica. This is fun. The Emerald Tablet is also known as the Samargadin tab, the Samargadin table, or the Tabula Samargadin. It is a is a compact and crypt, cryptic piece of Hermetica reputed to contain the secrets of the Prima Materia and its transmutation. Right. It was highly regarded by European alchemists as the foundation for their art and its hermetic tradition. We all know about the hermetic orders, right? And the Freemasons are hermetic type of society. And this, these are traditions. So the original source of the Emerald Tablet is actually unknown. Although Hermes Tremegistu, or Tremegistus, is how you say it, I think, is the author named in the text. Its first known appearance is in a book written in Arabic between the 6th and 8th centuries. The text was, the, was first translated into Latin in the 12th century, and numerous translations, interpretations, and commentaries followed suit. So the layers of meaning in the Emerald Tablet have been associated with the creation of the Philosopher's Stone, laboratory experimentation, phase transition, and the alchemy magnum opus, the ancient, the classical, the element system, and the correspondence between the macrocosm and the microcosm, which we use here on this show all the time, right? That's the micro to the macro, right? We, we always talk about that. So the guardian perspective is that the Emerald Tablet is the stolen accumulated knowledge that was compiled by the Anaki, the Sons of Belal, and the Gray Aliens from having uh, partial access to reading the creation code contained within the Law of One records. And this magical knowledge was given to their preferred genetic hybrids on Earth to gain power over others and become the ruling class and ultimately serve the human enslavement agenda of the negative alien entities. One such important figure that the negative alien entities or agenda is Thoth. And this, actually, sorry, this person actually groomed more people that were a part of this as well. So Thoth is a main character, but he groomed an anti-human agenda that impacted the future direction of human history. And, and this person who was affected was Aleister Crowley. We all know who Aleister Crowley is. And in gaining the knowledge from access, accessing higher universal truth, it is an important distinction to comprehend that, that accessing higher knowledge in itself is not evil or negative. It is the intention and the use of that knowledge or that technology that's de that determines its energetic quality and its cause and effect, right? As either service to, to self or service to others. How do you use whatever it is that this inherent knowledge is? So we can see that there's a lot of figures around this sort of knowledge that have been using it to control the masses sound familiar right to give certain individuals access into higher realms right and overall when thoth anki and enlil had this information they gave it to those to set in motion the capitulation of humankind species to selective view. Right? That's an overview. So we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about the Aseni massacre. And this is important because this is the genetics of humankind and how we become humans that we are today. 
And you're going to say, well, that's kind of going off off on a tangent. It is, but we're going to bring it full circle. I promise. I promise. So during the Ieni or Eseni massacres, the female high council members and the females that had a higher DNA code were taken to Nibiru by Thoth and the Anunnaki for forced breeding. This was the time that Thoth broke the Emerald Covenant Agreement which the guardians, with the Guardians and stole one of the CD plates, the holographic plates, and he translated that and wrote the well-known distorted Emerald Tablet. So from what we understand, we don't know who the author is of this tablet that we see out and about, but the original tablet was written by Thoth, taken from this from those holographic plates and you're going to understand why that's important later because we're going to get into the full story of how that typically happens and we're going to repeat a few sections a few times because not so much read them but they're going to come up in the story and it's going to make sense so first question we would have at this point is who were the asani or the 12 asani tribes right so he he basically massacred these people but who were they so the emerald founder records reveal that there are 12 aseni tribes which make up the entirety of the collective human gene pool or are the descendants of the universal tribe shield that has been originally incarnated onto this planet from the future timelines of tara which is again 5D Earth. Each of the tribes are genetically key coded to their demographic, planetary gate, location, and to the planetary dimensional sphere in its ley line network. So, this is a smart genetical coding, and it's specific to 12 areas on the planet. So, when, when we incarnate onto the planet, we have a genetic time code in our DNA related to the planetary gates dimensional system that is a part of our main human tribal identity. We activate our human tribal identity, personal planetary keys, when we activate our inner Christos. And by running the 12D ray stringing 144 harmonics throughout our entire light body, otherwise called the 12D shield. The identity has had many lifetimes that have participated with the consciousness evolutionary cycles of assembling DNA codes in the angelic human root races evolving throughout the solar system. So we are connected to all of it, all of them whether it be through genetics or through frequency or just being within a shield that they also resided within. Our bodies pick up on all of it and our code is imprinted upon our DNA, right? So the original 12 Asani tribes were seated on the earth as a part of the evolutional plan that was the result of the covenant of the Palador to rescue the lost souls of Tara, making it easier to reclaim these identities when the Stargates finally opened at the end of the Ascension Cycle, a.k.a. right now. Right? Right now. So this is where we understand the, the this is facilitating why we're starseeds. This is facilitating why we're walk-ins or indigos or, you know, why there are so many people waking up because of these stargates opening. We're able to access more of what's encoded on our DNA, right? So there's a lot more happening and we feel, and this is why when we, when I was doing the root races, every, or not the root races, I'm sorry, the, um, et races or races from the stars i would say to myself you know i relate i relate with that that group too i relate with that group too it's crazy it 
could it be that I'm a part of all the, a star seed from all of these different lifetimes that were on all these different planets? Possibly. Possibly. But I think what it has to do with is it has to do with the fact that all of those incarnations or all of those gates and all of those people who came through those gates have imprinted DNA on each other or imprinted light code on each other's DNA. So we understand that we have an empathetic feeling towards the other information of each individual race. So it, it it's truly remarkable, right? It's truly remarkable. And now we're going to get into the players surrounding the Emerald Tablet, right? So let's get back to it. So we're, now we're going to be talking about Thoth, Enki, and Lil, and the Emerald Tablet. I really, really loved this poster when I created it. It is a picture, and I have took out two, two cuts of Anunnaki's and kind of put them on either side of Thoth to make sure that uh, we get the real embodiment of what this means and the time period as well. Sugar B is right. Please like, share, and subscribe. When we share this out, we awaken the world together. We, we, can, we can act like the Schumann residents and create a wave that awakens everybody across the world. And truly, it's going to be a remarkable thing, right? It's going to be a remarkable thing. When, when we get a specific percentage of this world woken or awoke before this great split, it, I'm telling you, we're saving lives in the process. So <clears throat> let's talk about who these people are. So before the Luciferian Rebellion, and we're going to actually do an entire episode on that, the true motivation of Thoth allegiance to further the Nibiru Anunnaki domain agendas of Anki and Enlil to completely annihilate the Christos genetic template for achieving takeover of the solar system. And it was not well known by those guardian groups stationed in the lower dimensional timelines. Those that had incarnated in the lower dimensional stations had been cut off from direct communicational links with the liquid plasma Christos family that existed beyond the time matrix. So before the communications were cut off, the fallen Melchizedek entity that became Thoth was known to be the loyal known to be loyal to the Christos founders. Thus, it is, was a mystery within mysteries when discovering various states of identity that were gradually revealing to be imposters or AI reality clones. These counterfeits were strewn over many timelines and participated in many successive evolutionary cycles making them difficult to source so the ascension cycle is also about revealing the true identities in order to fully know who is actually who in these timelines and the identity of these groups that were primarily behind the military tactics the cloning the ai power source of the galactic wars and we're still in the process of discovering these trees today right so in reverse engineering the structural and genetic damage that took place in the universal time matrix from this position on earth. And so think about what I just said. So Thoth was working for Anki and Enlil. And what were they trying to do? They were trying to distinguish or uh, extinguish the Christos flame. Now, we could say that's so far back then. But is this transgression forgivable? Is this transgression not still having an effect on human beings today? That's what we have to ask ourselves. So I know that there are people who say that, that these entities now are against each other, which eventually they will be. We know that via, via history. And that one is good and the other is bad. And again, I've hyped up this back and forth. But truly, it comes down to the agenda. And what their agenda is. We have to keep that in mind. Everything in that shade of gray. But 
watching and reading about their past actions and how the equivalent of that is still happening on this time and this time plane or this spectral dimensional plane right now. And it's playing out in a way in which they, they meant it to play out. So who's the good guy? I'm not going to answer that question. I want you in the, in the chat to let me know what you think. But I'm going to tell you now, I don't think either of these entities are of the light. I think that they both have done so much harm to the human potential over so many years that maybe they've, they've reverted their ways now, but it's very difficult to sort of trust, you know, either or in any way, shape or fashion. And I know that there are, are factions building within this community, within the consciousness and, and contact community between two different people. We have to get past that, right? If you don't agree, that's okay. That's okay. Tell us why you don't agree and bring information to the table so we can evaluate it, right? And also, you know, personally, I wouldn't trust either of these entities as far as I could tell them. Because who's to say that there isn't some ultimate seven, seventh density plan going on or agenda being played out now in which they come back as the great deceptors or the fallen have now become heroes. We see this in the movies all the time. So we have to be on our A game. We have to be on high alert when it comes to these entities because they've proven themselves time and time again to not be a part of the light. And again, nobody is beyond redemption. And that's why we have to keep that open mind. But I don't think either are the good guy. Plain and simple. S debate settled, right? So let's keep going. So after gaining up, oh, did I miss a part? Yes, I missed a part. So the crystal star seeds incarnating in order to track the or origination of the AI source and the AI timelines and identify the exact event horizon or point of entry of the phantom matrix infection, which is entering the universal time matrix from the black hole. So after gaining control over the Giza Stargate post-Atlantis Atlantean cataclysm, the Thothian Anunnaki and their race lines in the Belalian groups made demands of the Christos founders and the Christos founder race that their entire angelic human race on Earth be placed under the dominion of the Anunnaki hybrid fallen angelic races. The founder races and the Christos representatives attempted to continue peaceful negotiations in finding a resolution to the territorial conflicts unfolding, and an agreement was made between the Guardians and the Anunnaki in the Aquil constellation that was referred to as the Treaty of Altair. We'll go over that a little bit in a minute. And before the negative alien factions were gathered together to join their forces during the aftermath of the breaking of the Treaty of Tear, these Anunnaki groups and the Draconian Zeta groups were enemies in competing war agendas for domination of the Earth territory. So now, the black hole entities are those that ripped a hole in the Orion Belt from the neighboring matrix and built their control center around the 8D portal entry into our time matrix. Thus, they controlled the 8th dimensional stargate from the galactic plane, and thus controlled what entities got in and out of the lower dimensions, blocking out access to the crystal's genetics and installing the Yahweh matrix. Some of these factions decided to use Earth as a prison planet for trapping and containing all undesirables, including those entities that were not compliant with the authoritarian 
militarized rule or were straight out criminals and degenerate perverts. Thus, the Earth and the solar system became known in the Black Sun Orion group as the prison colony. And as they would let anyone, they wouldn't let anyone out. Especially out of the reincarnation cycles via their technology frequency fences and the soul harvesting structures. So the Black Sun considered Earth their territory and believed the surface of the Earth are criminal prisoners, which extends to them the right to abduct humans for an assortment of working slave colonies. These are the underground and off planet bases like Ceres coming to light as whistleblowers remember their experiences as the My Labs and being recruited into the secret space programs. And they're both involved in galactic human trafficking. So you see the consequence of what this was. Right? Insane. That's wild. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay? And this is why what we do is when we think about Mother Earth, we don't think about the prison planet. I'm going to bring it back to me real quick and we'll keep going. This is the hospital planet. And the more that we realize that and implement that thinking, the faster it recuperates itself and it revives itself to the 5D once more for all entities living on this plane of existence. This is why it's important to real, make it a realization that this is a hospital planet. And that this hospital planet is helping bring about this ascension cycle, which is opening these stargates. And these stargates opening is an influx of Christos energies and frequencies that are imprinting more and more onto our DNA. And when we search out those stargates, we can come so close to them that the light will fill you up and it will walk with you. I'm telling you, it will fill you up and it will spread across all the world for everybody, for everybody to enjoy. So let us get back to the task at hand. <clears throat> so Thoth has been playing the role of double agent for many eons and made several duplicitous agreements with the Syrian High Council to appear as if he would uphold the Paladorian Covenant, which is designed to protect the Christos template for evolving angelic human genetics. The Paladorian and the Christos founders that exist outside of time were not able to connect directly to Earth and in, into many sections of the universal time matrix until the neutron window or <clears throat> galactical gates were opened in late 2012. Many of us incarnated on the earth during the ascension cycle be their representative placeholders and keep the Christos template alive on earth through the building of the indigo shield. So over the years, we were able to build the energetic circuit of communicational links through the Christos Shield Network, and now in full communication and contact with the Christos founder races. This is meant in the many prophecies describing the return of the Christos to Earth. And this event has already happened. The infusion of the Christic architecture from ascending human embodiment will continue to gradually shift the energetic landscape and the consciousness of Earth allowing much higher consciousness beings to incarnate for many years to come. So Thoth's personal and direct military intervention with Enki and Enlil groups to incite wars with a purpose of committing genocide agendas of human holocausts was fully revealed 
during the tragic events of the invasion of the 11th tribe, which resulted in the Aseni massacre. The primary goal was to obtain one of the actual holographic discs that was being guarded on Earth by the Maji Grail King for his particular Stargate genetics, Asani Tribe 11. The content of this disc included the formulas and the secrets contained in the art of energy transportation and dominion over lesser forces and the manifestations through alchemy. These included immortality sciences through the source of the prima materna or the azoth that is found in the creator's holy spirit generated by the mother of god principle so do you see why this tablet is so important and essentially why we're looking at all this and we're getting back to these way now. And this is why people are waking up. So people can say whatever they want. When I read this, I resonate. And I think that this is happening now. And as we see there, there's going to be a lot of people who listen to this stream and agree with one of those sides that one is good over the other. And instead of actually listening to the stream itself, they're going to judge. And we're not those who, who do that. We listen to every side because it all facilitates our growth, right? And our expansion. So as we can see, this is what I'm talking about, about these entities. They've done something that has cut us off or tried to cut us off for many, many generations from the actuality of who we are now if these beings are coming back now to set the record straight that could be your potential atonement but until that's brought to light that that that's how it happened or that's what happened i'm going to hold my reservations about them as i should i should suggest everybody do that and i don't make suggestions like that so let us keep going further. So we talked about a couple things here, like the Treaty of Altair. You know, it's... I, I like this comment. I see ego is really difficult for a lot to let go of. Very much so. Very much so. Nothing I say is 100% the truth. Because truth can be pers uh, about perspective, right? So I'm, I'm giving you points of research to do your own and create your own perspective. I never imply that I am the only bearer or holder of truth. Because that would be a lie. And I don't lie when I'm up here. I do my best to be forthright and forthcoming with me for with everything. So, you know... I, I can appreciate a comment like that. So, the Treaty of Altair. After gaining control over the Giza Stargate and the Atlantean Cataclysm, the Anunnaki made demands of the Christos founder races and the entire angelic human race on Earth. And, of course, I wanted them to be placed under the Anunnaki hybrid fallen angel races, which essentially is the people that were here via the Christos living free, Naki or Thoth wanted those people to be reside under the pharaohs of choosing within the ancient, um, you know, ancient Egypt and, and Middle East that were the Anunnaki's hybrids. So that to me is crazy. It's pretty wild. So this agreement was made a long, long time ago and was later revealed to be a ploy 
for the borrowing time for planning military strategies orchestrated to gain dominance by recruiting an assortment of alien intruder groups that were currently in the process of staking their own claims on Earth for their own interests. These factions would join their forces and collaborate together in order to essentially stage a coup for planetary domination and take over the Earth during this ascension cycle. These combined intruder groups are what are referred to as the negative alien entities or negative alien agendas. And the original agreement negotiations included that the Guardian founders would assist and support in the protection of the Anunnaki and the unfolding military attack happening during the Orion Wars and was occurring in the highest density dimensional timelines and in exchange for them releasing control over the, over the Giza Stargate and then handing it back to the founders of the Guardian Alliance. But instead, the Anunnaki never intended to honor their agreement, but covertly negotiated deals with several other intruder groups to oppose the Christos race hosting of this planetary ascension in which this timeline, the stargates, would open and humanity would begin accelerated spiritual development and become capable to achieve freedom from the reincarnation cycle on Earth. The negative alien entities effectively declared an edict of war against the Christos founders and all of the Maji Grail King lines, the indigos, as well as the Earth's population. And a one year later, they staged an Adam Belial ritual, ritual in order to institute a public ceremony announcing of their new world order plans. Now we're into the present, because this also happens on September twelfth, two thousand, and that culminates. And September 11th, 2001. We all know what happened there. Right? It's a blood sacrifice. And it was intended to be the line drawn in the sand to show the negative alien agendas were proceeding with their full domination and slavery agenda of humanity and Earth. This is how long this has been playing out. This event brought forward what was known as the 9-11 timelines. The institution of the false reality timelines in order to take the planet into full AI assimilation timelines in which the fallen AI timeline loops that were fully controlled by the negative alien agendas within their phantom matrix. So this is what I mean by fully happening now from ancient Egypt and the and Sumeria to 2000 this is you have to remember that these entities being within the fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth dimensional playing field are not restricted in time like we are thousands ten thousand it's it's relative to them when you hit fifth dimensional, you know, fifth dimensional plane or even fourth dimensional plane consistently, time reacts different. It's different. So pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. So now we're going to talk about the collectives. And this is why. This, this may get some people a little upset when I say these things because they'll see some of the people that they listen to out there, they fall within these collectives. Some of them don't even know that they're in these collectives, right? They don't even know it. So Thoth, Enki, and Enlil collectives are Anunnaki hybrid fallen angelics that are from Nibiru, and they formed an alliance in the negative alien agendas with the Necromittens, the Odecromans or the Odecra, uh, 
Otacrons, and they serve the Nibiran interests in capturing territory on Earth and in the solar system. Most of their main harvesting networks are located in the United Kingdom, and thus they have a heavy presence in a landmass that is known as Reptilian Central. It's been brought to the attention of many to observe the recruitment and grooming techniques of the Thoth, Anki, and Enlil collectives, which are the Anunnaki fallen angelic hybrids. These groups are contacting their preferred male bloodline of Earth for the express purpose of creating the next generation and worshiping mind control programs that the Guardian host referred to as the building of Anki's army. Hmm. Hmm. These Thoth groups have formed strategic alliances under the popular moniker of Galactic Federation, but they're not the Galactic Federation. They use Galactic Federation as a falsehood, right? So they say that they are a part of the Galactic Federation, but they're truly not. Now, while there is a pro-human Galactic Federation, there are those posing as such, and they're not. So making contact with selected members of the cabal and the government and the Illuminati bloodlines, and they started to widely infiltrate the secret system of the Freemasons and the spiritual communities. The propaganda of the Galactic Federation of this specific, entity that solved the Galactic Federation, not the Galactic Federation itself, as a pro-human ET group, is used to derail the spiritual awakening of people and route them into the New Age movement and their respective mind-controlled based beliefs. Many popular spiritual energy healing systems have been infiltrated by this false Galactic Federation in order to track and tag participants for astral implants in a new age population. These groups were responsible for the directing scalar based weapons into the planetary field and orchestrating with the Nubirans to erase the collective human race memories and to eliminate any trace of our record his uh, recorded histories stemming from Atlantis and the Luciferian covenant that was behind this tragedy that led to the Atlantean cataclysm. That is what I mean by some people might get mad. So, again, there is a Galactic Federation. There is a pro-human Galactic Federation, to be clear. There are people posing as a false Galactic Federation. And some people who are in contact with what they believe is the Galactic Federation are not. dramatic pause they're not and i'm not naming anybody specifically because i don't know honestly i don't know i can't tell you who is and who isn't it's not my place to one and while there might be intel out there you know we can't we can't judge because even the people who are caught up in this this group, right, or this this type of, I guess, vivid cycle, they do not know that they are in that cycle. Therefore, they should be given penance and forgiveness and be brought to the side of which they can do some real good, right? And, and like, again, I'm, 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 I know we're, we're saying people in the chat, but I'm not pointing fingers on anybody. It's not, it's not my place. I'm not, I'm not the judge, jury, you know, it's not me. It's not what I do. And I'm not calling anybody out either. It's not what this is intended for. This is intended to create an awareness. So we don't, uh, the people listening right now don't get themselves trapped in this. Because it goes back all the way to ancient Egypt and people have been getting scooped up and spin out for a long, long time. And they probably will moving forward you know but i think you know 
I think that we have to really, really come together and just be cognizant of our egos too, because ego is a downfall. It's a downfall. And, you know, there is a lot of human trafficking happening from those on earth, right? From those who are on earth trafficking many, many people, but also off world entities trafficking people and human consciousness. The micro to the macro, everything is, you know, everything has that polarity of if it's done in a small network down there, it's done on a giant network out there. It's you have to understand there are synchronicities everywhere. And ego is not completely bad, right? Sometimes ego creates survival. So we have to understand that as well. But being able to control the ego is truly the mastery of self, right? That's what it's all about. So another couple of another couple of things I wanted to talk about was the fallen angelics. We heard that term used quite a lot. And it's good to know the fallen angelics, right? So created by the fallen angelics to counter counteract and destroy the Christic human guardian race for control and dominion over this time vector in this universal time matrix. These are also called the sons of Bilal or the Bilal group. And here are some of the names in which they go by. The Alpha Omega Order Templar Melchizedek, the Fallen Seraphim, the Semjays Anunnaki from the Pleiades Alcyon, the Jehovian Anunnaki from Sirius A, a designer of the crucifixion implant network on Earth, the Thoth, Enki, and Elil collectives from Nubiru and Sirius A, Marduk, Necromitan, and Lil Odekron alliance with the Nubirans, the Michael family Nephilim hybrids, the cloned Michael bodies of the Anunnaki hybrids from Orion, Sirius, Andromeda, and as a result of the Michael Wars on Alberon, Aldebaran, right? So, this is just giving you a little bit more insight into who they are. So, We're going to talk about something that's essentially on the Emerald Tablet and what the context of it is and why, again, it's so important. So the stolen founder records is what this is about. And this is 22,000 years ago. Thoth led a militarized event which resulted in the Asani massacre and murdering the males and, of course, taking the women again to Nibiru by stealing the CDT plate and it was in his possession. And from this stolen work, he wrote down information that would later become the basics of the teachings of Hermeticism. And this is the Emerald Tablet. Thus, in human history, in hidden human history, this is a trigger timeline that changed the future of human evolution informing the controlled beliefs of the Luciferian elites around Hermeticism, Esoteric Kabbalah, Mystery Scrolls, and Secret societies. And these secret societies were originally formed by the Luciferian Knights Templar and were ultimately designed to hide the ancient secret knowledge of humanity's true origins from the common peoples in order to route them into the gutturals of superstitions, ignorance, and organized religion. Right? So, it was, it was again during the Aseni Massacre 
that Thoth was able to steal this holographic plate from this Maji king in the 11th human tribe, accessing the cosmic schematics of immortality alchemy and became revered author of what has spawned into many esoteric texts and spiritual traditions. During the Middle Kingdom timelines, he incarnated as a powerful magician and Egyptian priest and became known on earth as the author of what would be referred to as Hermeticism, which we went over before. And basically, the Emerald Tablet is a cryptic of, of the prima materia and its transmutation. And in Europe, it was regarded in the Middle Ages. And it was the foundation for all of the art that we see from the Renaissance all the way through. Right? And it even goes into the spiritual Gnosis and the spiritual Gnostic teachings. And it's found its way in the alchemy theory in later authors as well. Magical magical treatises and, and theosophical rumifications of redemption. And, you know, it, it's it's wild. It's wild how it's made its way through. It made it, it's made its rounds. So, you know, thank you, Neil. I appreciate that. We really appreciate anything, you know, anybody who donates to the channel is, is truly incredible. You help us do the work that we can do. Thank you. And we can go into the Emerald Founder Records. There's so many different places we can go from here. And I think that we really have to, you know, take into consideration how much of this impacts the historical context, especially when we're going back and reading about these histories. And now here's where it gets a little bit scary, right? So we know that they've impacted art, literature, basic telling of stories to facilitate the suppression of human potentiality. So even when we are learning from textbooks or from books and we're re-going our minds through history, we have to look at what our gut is telling us, if this was actual or if this is leading us down a, a pathway that is essentially boxing us in to these teachings, right? So it turns the world upside down a little bit. It does. So it really, really, really is absolutely insane to keep going. So the founder records are, again, the holographic plates, the, the founder records, the emerald founder records, and the explicit emerald covenant. The Avenger, the Maji Grail King. We're going to go over that ex specifically. It's basically the head of each one of these tribes and these 12 tribes. They even talk about the 12 tribes in the, in the Old Testament of the Bible. The 12 ancient Hebrew tribes that essentially went through all of the Middle East. Now, were they Hebrew? Possibly, maybe not. But we see signification of these 12 tribes existing. So each one of these tribes had their own disc, their own holographic disc. So there were 12 holographic discs as well. And they were known as the Emerald Founder Records. So each one of these specific Maji Grail Kings had their own disc. And they had their own planetary stargate as well. And this is where we get into a little bit of the Emerald Covenant. And the Emerald Covenant, I know this isn't really, you know, the same, the Emerald Covenant. It's not really what it means, but it had a green background. The guy was meditating. I thought this is going to be cool. Looks pretty cool, right? So we're also going to go over where these 12 stargates are or were at the time. 
So the Emerald Founder records contain explicit knowledge about the origins and genetics of the human race, which included historical timeline accounts of the galactic history considered to be the, the divine birthright of all angelic humans. This data was compiled upon a master copy of telegraphic disks that were known as the original Emerald Founder records, which contained the basis for describing the mechanics of the manifestation and the unification of all expressions with the eternal, loving, one God source. The Emerald Founder records included explicit ancient wisdom teachings on the unifying pr principles of the cosmic sovereign law of one, in which humans were directly taught how to spiritually activate their light body through consciousness training methods so that they could achieve full liberation as the cosmic Christos. The content held in these holographic disks was being protected by the founder guardians in the ancient genetical library that exists outside of time and that was being preserved on Earth's behalf until more of the humans on Earth could awaken to remember who they really were. This was designed as a, a fail-safe protective mechanism put in place during the covenant of the Palador and the guardian host plan for the reclamation of the Christian. Until the earth underwent the ascension cycle and reached its threshold in which the crystalline grid was able to hold the highest crystal's frequency and the intelligent coding that was contained in these disks and the Emerald Founders assigned members of the Syrian High Council to guard and preserve the sacred wisdom of these holy records for the future benefit of Earth. Thus, those assembled in the Syrian High Council that were primarily in the Universal Christos lineages of the Emerald Order and the Blue Flame Melchizedek were acting as the primary activists of Earth's vast genetic library and timeline history through the Gnostic process of their own consciousness embodiment. Archivists are responsible for assembling, cataloging, preserving, and managing valuable collections of historical information. In, these, in this case, they were also responsible for mapping out the DNA code that functions as the genetic library for all creations throughout the 12 organic timelines. This data, again, was compiled upon these 12 holographic disks and were known as the Emerald Founder Records. So, pretty insane, right? And each disk was protected and assigned to the Magi Grail King on Earth, who acted as the main guardian of the planetary stargate of his tribe. And the Magi Grail King assigned spiritually trained members of the Asani tribes as the keepers of the law of one knowledge to carry the sacred wisdom through the multiple timelines and protect related information for accessing during a later time cycle. Crazy, right? So there was a war over these holographic disks. So I want to go into, we're going to finish, there's a lot more to go. And we're going to talk about a lot more at a later date. There's probably going to be a part two to this. It just won't be named the same thing. There's, you know, we, we could talk about the genetic library code sourcing, about the war over these hollow disks. We could talk about the Prisca theology. There's a lot more to go over. The Egyptian priest Hermes and how to reclaim human history and things like that. But we've hit that hour mark, and I don't really want to go too crazy because there's a lot. There's a lot to go over. We stopped at slide 12, and there was 112 people in the room at that time. That is a synchronicity telling me to stop. Telling me to stop. So, again, let's keep our hearts and minds open to each other and to the exterior stimuli coming at us from all directions. This is truly just prolific information. This is what needs to be sent out to 
the four corners of Earth and all ends of this globe and possibly even the universe. We are the embodiment of the Christos mission. And our mission as Christos peoples is to awaken everyone. And so, so it is, right? And it, like we always say, this information is the activation. And we are the ones that we've been waiting for. And if not us, then who? My name is Rob Yox, and this is my statements. This is what I've put out there for everybody to have and keep record of. This will be here on YouTube for free all the time. Thank you, Cecilia. We appreciate you so much. Um, there, We will be doing events. I'm really thinking about opening up a Zoom meeting so we can really big meeting place and everybody can come in. You don't have to turn your cameras on, but we can do group discussions to go further into this. I think it's going to be beneficial for everybody. I think getting into these big, big spaces and sharing information, not just in text, but in conversation. Excuse me, conversation. The conversations need to be had. So let's have them, right? So this has been, my energy levels were up and down throughout the whole episode. So now I'm shot. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I hope everybody finds this with love and respect. Um, I love you all. Um, I love everybody out there doing this good work, even if they, even if they are a part of that collective and don't know it. Love them too. Um, let's look out for one another. We we're here together. We, we're sifting through the soup. So let's uh, let's make the best of it, right? Thank you all, and have a great evening.